You've probably gathered by now I'm a complete maniac when it comes to phase and phase responses and so on. The reason I'm so fixated on slopes, crossovers and responses, plus the phase and how it behaves from linear phase mode to minimum phase mode, dates back to my days as a sound designer. In the early days, when I first started the transition from sound design into production, I looked to all my hardware. Everything was hardwired, so to speak, and circuit-based. I had very, very little in terms of digital products. How I used to distinguish the difference between one manufacturer or one topology to another was really by ear. I really wasn't that well versed in why something sounded good and something didn't. I had started to realize that really we were dealing with two types of topologies. One being linear phase and the other being minimum phase. So if you think of my old analog hardware outboards, most of it, if not all, was minimum phase. You're going to hear those phrases crop up everywhere. And if you're serious about your music and you're studying a course, you're going to need to know the difference between linear phase and minimum phase. Nowadays, with software-based dynamics, linear phase and minimum phase are absolutely critical. Whereas before, we used to just ignore it and say, right, that Phoenix compressor sounds lovely, or the Fatso sounds awesome, without knowing why. We just loved that harmonic distortion that we got within the unit. It just sounded pleasing. First off, I'm using FabFilters Pro Q2. As you know, by now, I like visually good products so I can teach. What I've done is I've used this wonderful utilities plugin called the VST Analyzer, and it's by Chris Budd, or Buddy. I don't know how his name is pronounced, to be honest. B-U-D-D-E. This is the 32-bit version. That's why I'm having to do it all standalone and using 32-bit versions of certain plugins. He's taking donations for now as he's developing a 64-bit version. Please, please go and donate. We need people like this and we need products like this. Okay, so what's this VST analyzer? It allows me to test plugins based on a number of different criteria and test measurements. I am for now testing only the frequency response because all we care about is the frequency response of the EQ that I'm using now. I want to show you what happens between linear phase and minimum phase. And to really test how things are behaving, it would be nice if I could load up a ton of different EQs or compressors or whatever, and I will be doing that as we go along. So for now, let's stick to the basics of linear phase versus minimum phase. I'm going to try and keep this short. I know I've been dithering on for ages. Right, let me first try and match the flat line or the zero axis as we call it. So you've got a visual representation here. I'm going to throw this into linear phase and zero latency every time I want to run this. Zero latency is full minimum phase. Forget natural phase for now. And linear phase is linear phase. If you're doing coursework and you want a basic definition, linear phase EQs or linear phase exhibits the same phase response whether you cut or boost. Minimum phase doesn't. I have flung this into frequency mode, so we're only testing the frequency response of whatever filter I load up here on the EQ. Let's start with linear phase. Linear phase states whether I boost or cut, the phase response will be the same. And because I'm now on linear phase mode, whether I boost or cut, you don't see anything happening here. Why? Because this is simply there to show us the phase variance or discrepancies between these topologies. In other words, when I boost or cut, you shouldn't get a response here. Now, if I throw this into zero latency, which is actually minimum phase mode, on minimum phase, the cutoff point stays at 400. But can you see 
how the slopes are moving when I boost and when I cut. The phase response has changed. After the cutoff, we have this and this. These are the response. And the response drops back to what we call flatline mode or the zero axis. If I now change this, the response has completely changed. In effect, it's taken a mirror value across the cutoff. If I drop that into linear phase, all of that should disappear. No phase response, whether I boost or cut. That's with a bell. Now, let me show you what happens with a bell in minimum phase mode when I change the slopes. You see what happened here, how the response has completely changed in minimum phase mode. And if I extend that even further, you can see how much narrowing we've got at specific frequencies. But here's the interesting thing. Our cutoff is still at 400 hertz. That's quite a huge variance in the phase response. And if I extend the Q factor, which means I'm now narrowing the band, you can see how tight the phase response is. In other words, we will hear that quite distinctly as resonance. If I extend that and move that, you'll see that our cutoff again hasn't changed. Let's now select a different filter type. So let's have a shelf. If you look at the cutoff point here, which is exactly the same here, let me bring that on to 400. Don't ask me to be bang on, I really can't be bothered. Look at my cutoff here, but look at what the shelf has done and look at the response either side of the cutoff. Whereas here, we have the shelf effect and it flat lines to zero. Here, we have it as a peak and a drop past the cutoff point. That's our phase response. And if I cut, I get an identical display here. Let me bring that a little bit gentler and let me put the Q to center value. Interesting, isn't it, how the shape varies. Now look at what happens with the low cut. Even if I stretch the cutoff point, look at what's happening here. Although my frequency is, let's say 300, look at my response here and my response here. And bear in mind, at zero, which is where my cutoff point is meant to be, and the slope extends past and before zero to create this shape, i.e. we've now got a high pass or a low cut, look at the phase response. And if I want to extend the Q factor, I can't. I've picked the 6 dB slope. I need 12 dBs before I can access the Q. Now, I'm boosting my cutoff point above the flat line zero, but look at the phase response here. Because it's a low cut, and if I do, say, a band pass, look at the response here. It's completely and utterly different. What happens if I go into linear phase? It's gone. Because irrespective of whether I pick a vicious slope or not on the band pass, and I'm in linear phase, I shouldn't get a display of a phase shift of any sort. But in minimum phase, I've got this. If I extend the Q to the point where it's almost completely flatlined for the whole bandwidth, we've still got this response. 
So what do all these various filters and their crazy responses, as we think, do in terms of music? If I want to create a colored mix, something that's got a specific texture, I tend to go for minimum phase. If I want to make surgical corrections to my mix, it doesn't matter whether I'm editing vocals or whether I want something that's going to have absolutely no smearing whatsoever, smearing being the variance between the phase responses of, say, two bands and how they relate to each other, then I'll use linear phase. Because then I know I can cut, boost, and always have the same value when I'm in linear phase. Whereas if I use two different minimum phase products, I'd have different responses. I hope this helps you in understanding phase, but as I said, it's going to be part one of many tutorials.